Hello, this is me, Javed Malik from the Ambassador Partnership. As you know, one of the core areas of work for the Ambassador Partnership is diplomatic training. And in this area, we are delighted to be partnering and collaborating with the United Nations Institute of Training and Research, UNITAR, in delivering one of the most excellent courses in dispute resolution. One of the unique things about this course is that it will be delivered purely online and will be delivered by experienced ambassadors. Ambassadors who have really worked real time in dispute resolution. So the training that they will be imparting will be based on their real time experiences at the highest level as, for, as diplomats, as uh, you know, negotiators, as ambassadors in their role when they were officially uh, conducting their uh, negotiations. So it is a unique advantage and of course uh, delivered in a very professional way through a collaboration between Ambassador Partnership and UNITA. So let's talk more about it and how the course will be delivered and how it will be structured. Uh, today we are joined in this discussion not only by our colleagues from the Ambassador Partnership but also from UNITA. So let's start the discussion. Right, so let me start by welcoming Mr. Rabi Al Haddad, who of course leads the multilateral diplomacy division at UNITA. He's been involved in the curriculum development and let's discuss more about how the course is going to be structured. So Mr. Rabi Haddad, tell us more about this collaboration between Ambassador Partnership and UNITA and how do you think that the collaboration will benefit uh, those who are attending the course? Thank you, Ambassador Javed. It's such a pleasure to be with you, and we cherish also our partnership with the Ambassador Partnership. Please allow me first to give you a few information about what we do and how we do it at the United Nations Institute for Training and Research. So our division has two main goals. The first one is we support multilateralism and the intergovernmental machinery of the United Nations by empowering delegates and diplomats of the United Nations member states and the governing bodies of the United Nations agencies. Second, we uphold the principles and values and purposes of the United Nations, and we help the organization deliver on its mandate in all the fields related to peace and security, sustainable development, climate change, trade, humanitarian assistance, and human rights. Now, dispute resolution is the core of the work, as you know, of the United Nations, and the raison d'etre of the organization that was established for the maintenance of international peace and security and the peaceful settlement of international disputes. As highlighted by the COVID-19 pandemic that we are living and all experiencing right now, in an increasingly complex and competitive world, uh, we are experiencing nation states who are trying to preserve as much as they can their national interest. And this undoubtedly is leading sometimes to disputes that require mechanisms and also skills and techniques to manage them. For these reasons, the executive certificate on dispute resolution comes at a crucial time for world governance. It will enable participants to strengthen their professional skills in dispute resolution and develop partnerships with other practitioners in negotiation, leadership and dispute resolution. The workshops will consist of lectures uh, and facilitated discussions by senior experts and practitioners in the field. Now the skills we'll, we will focus on are highly transferable. Uh, so irrespective if you are coming from the private or public, this will relate to you. And they are relevant to those involved in bilateral and multilateral negotiations and diplomacy, as well as government relations. So we welcome you uh, to the executive pro program and look forward to exchanging with you in person. Well, thank you very much. That's very informative. And of course, as you rightly said, in today's world, uh, diplomacy, multilateral diplomacy, dispute resolution is an important integral part of how nation states conduct their diplomacy. And of course, we've got with us uh, Sir Stuart Eldon, who has been an ambassador uh, for the UK and also has worked at the United Nations in New York. So he would have the real time experience on how things are developing. So, so Stuart, uh, if I can uh, bring you into the discussion and ask you on how you think that this course, which is being uh, de developed in a collaboration with AP, Ambassador Partnership and UNITA, uh, will benefit uh, those who attend that, this, uh, this important course. Well, thanks, Ambassador. It's really great for the Ambassador Partnership as a group of former diplomats with quite considerable experience in negotiation and dispute resolution to be working with UNITAR on this venture. 
Uh, so for us, it's really great and a fantastic opportunity to share some of the, uh, the skills we've gained over the years. We all have to resolve disputes in our daily and professional lives. But sometimes we don't do it perhaps as well as we could do it. And so what we're hoping to do in this course is to make people better at doing the jobs they have to do as diplomats and negotiators across the, uh, across the spectrum of business, whether it's uh, diplomatic disputes or perhaps in some cases helping uh, commercial organizations uh, resolve issues they have with governments and other people. And I think the, the really important thing to start with is understanding the problem. Because if you don't understand really what's going on, you won't be able to get to grips with how to resolve it. So it's really important to get a feel for what is causing the problem for both sides of it. To understand really what one side or the other says and how what one side or the other says reflects into really what they want. Yes. So we'll aim on the course to give you uh, some useful tips and tricks to help you understand different perspectives, your own and those of the other side. And also to, um, to really think about the way in which you yourself are approaching the problem. Does your culture uh, give you a particular slant? Do you need to take account of unconscious bias? Uh, how does your perspective influence the way you approach the problem? And the second thing is to understand the impact of what's gone on beforehand. Uh, history plays an enormous role. Uh, I was engaged myself in uh, efforts to resolve the Northern Ireland problem in the UK. And that's been determined by over 800 years of sometimes unfortunate history. So history is very important. Things like religion in political disputes can be very important. Uh, and it's, it's really important to get to the bottom of how those issues play out in, into the approach of both sides. And then there's subjectivity. You can't go into most problems on a totally objective basis because people will have their own perceptions of them and those perceptions will influence how they approach the problem. And then finally in diplomacy, politic politics and political imperatives are also very important. And we'll try and give the course participants some tools to analyze and understand all of these issues so that they can map out an approach to resolving the problem and organize themselves to do that well. Uh, you, uh, I found it very interesting that you said that, of course, and it's true that we are always resolving disputes in everyday life. These disputes could be of personal nature, business nature, and of course, serious uh, diplom uh, disputes and diplomacy that we, that we always do as ambassadors. Uh, uh, so I would like to ask you whether this course is particularly aimed only at um, mid-career diplomats, young diplomats, or also the private sector might benefit uh, from such a course, as uh, Rabi Al Haddad mentioned, is an executive certificate. So will it be limited to diplomats, or would it have a wider spectrum? No, I'm sure everyone will benefit. As Rabi said, the skills are eminently transferable. Uh, and of course, the approach you take to a particular problem will depend on what that problem is. But it's not just diplomats. Uh, I think the skills that we will teach are very relevant to the private sector. Uh, since uh, leaving the British Foreign Service, for example, I've helped a number of companies um, sort out problems that they've had uh, involving governments and parastatal organizations, whether it's been an insurance policy that's gone wrong or late or delayed payment or whatever. All these skills are really helpful in getting to understand problems and getting to understand how you can best help solve them. Absolutely, and that's important. I mean, from personal experience, I moved from the private sector uh, into diplomacy and then back into the private sector. You're absolutely right. The skills can be transferred, which we can use in everyday management of affairs. Uh, moving uh, from uh, Sir uh, Stewart, uh, we've got another founding uh, partner of the Ambassador Partnership, uh, Ambassador Charles Crawford, who is indeed uh, uh, an accomplished diplomat, served in the British Foreign Service in various countries. Uh, so, uh, so I would like to ask uh, Charles Crawford uh, about initially the course, how he views uh, this collaboration between Ambassador Partnership and 
um, the UNITAR? And of course, how do you think this course would benefit diplomats and non-diplomats in uh, equipping them with the skills needed in resolving disputes? Well, we've done a lot of different courses now, Stuart and I and yes. our other, other colleagues. We, I mean, I don't know how many, but too many with lots and lots and lots of different UN organizations, big, small UN colleagues from around the world. So, you know, we've road tested this and we find that it works. So it's great to be doing this with with UNITAR, of course, because they, you know, they, they bring that inside, if you like, uh, element to what we're doing, which we you know, have a bit, but not quite so much. Um, I think, look, I think this course is about big things and small things. Big things. What's a dispute? What's the negotiation about? What's being traded? What's at stake? You know, these are very big things and they're always easy to analyze. You know, if it's a huge climate change conference or if it's a dispute about a river, you know, there's, there's, there's intensity of emotions and feelings and, and interests and so on. And then there's, if you like, the small things which we really focus on, which is how you actually get through meetings, how you actually listen how you show the other side that you're listening, how you start a meeting strongly, how you prepare the agenda, how you get the tone right, how you deal with intensity, how you push back if people are being difficult or rude or obstructive and unkind, mean-spirited. How do you sum things up? Violence is very important in all this, just the idea of pacing yourself using one question at a time and then working out, did they answer it? So you, it, it, I think a lot of our approach boils down to listening, listening to the other side, listening to yourself, listening to what they say, listening to what they don't say, listening to what they do, listening to what they don't do. And of course, those last ones, listening to what they don't say and listening to what they don't do are very tricky because you've got a confirmation bias, which is to listen to what you can see in observe and listening to things you can't see and observe is very tricky so we've we focus on all these things and the the practical outcomes are absolutely excellent well thank you ambassador charles crawford and um uh, before i move to my next participant jerome lehost who is of course a senior consultant a senior international consultant with unitar has involved in has been involved in training and uh, curriculum development uh, has an illustrious career in that uh, so I'd like to ask Mr. Jerome, the host, uh, you know, you must have developed curriculums, been involved in training in different courses. Uh, what's unique about this course is, of course, the collaboration between AP and, uh, I keep saying AP, Ambassadors Partnership, Ambassador Partnership and UNITAR. Uh, and what is unique about this collaboration is that the course is being delivered by ambassadors who have not only served as senior positions, but has, have been involved in real time negotiations and dispute resolution. So how do you see it as a non-diplomat, somebody who has developed many courses, how would you say that this course is different from the others? Thank you very much, Ambassador Javed. And uh, this is a, a very good question because we tend to think of conflict resolution or uh, um, dispute resolution from the simple angle of uh, conflict management. However, yes. what is specific here is that we want to introduce the leadership angle, the leadership dimension to resolving disputes. And uh, where there are people, there is conflict. And uh, we all yes. bring our different values, needs, and expectations to the workplace or to a dispute resolution table. And they can sometimes, of course, clash with those of our colleagues or parties negotiating. So. This workshop is meant to help leaders developing a leadership style that assists dispute resolution. Uh, well, after all, effective leaders just build teams that work well together to start with. And we need, we need to find this inner cohesion or inner peace before we go out and resolve uh, uh, disputes outside. And as a leader, we facilitate the resolution of conflicts that can distract the team members or decrease productivity or destroy motivation and lead frustration and anger. So we also recognize that some conflicts, of course, is, is, is uh, natural and necessary to produce uh, innovative solutions to problems or encourage meaningful communication. And it always leads to clarification and better cooperation. So in this highly interactive workshop, 
uh, we will see together how leadership can play a decisive role in dispute resolution. Uh, for example, leaders can use their position or expertise or persuasive ability to exercise control, but they can also use a, a, a more participative leadership style because you want to foster more an environment of cooperation and collaboration. You create that soil of cooperation uh, uh, on which uh, uh, the, 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 the solutions can be found. So we help team members uh, also overcoming interpersonal conflicts and promote acceptance of other cultures and experiences uh, sometimes. So. Uh, whether you are resolving internal or external disputes, whether you are working in a private business related environment or for the public sector, defending public interest or national interest, uh, or of course, defending business interest, the role of leaders is to create that cohesion by being the common denominator and the catalyst for successful disputes resolution. Very interesting. And of course, leadership uh, plays an important role in uh, all matters, including dispute resolution. I was very intrigued by what Ambassador Charles Crawford was saying that during negotiations, you know, you see and hear uh, other your counterparts. And also sometimes you have to observe things that you don't see and hear uh, based on perceptions and the, the implicit messages that you might come across during negotiations, which can be the key factors in uh, making sure that whether this negotiation is going to be successful or not. Uh, before we move on, uh, let me also introduce uh, Cindy Hancock, who has been involved in training and education development uh, for a number of years. And uh, you know she's been uh, involved with UNITAR as well and as other organizations as a leadership coach and as a trainer, educationist. So tell us, uh, Cindy, about your initially, uh, your views on this collaboration between Ambassador Partnership and uh, UNITAR and how do you see this course uh, developing and providing the requisite skills needed for people in resolving disputes? Thank you very much. It is a very relevant course, um, especially where we find ourselves today in um, many conflict situations. We've got COVID-19 that brings a different set of conflict skills. Um, but that also creates an opportunity for leadership to thrive. And when we think of the word leadership, it can bring to mind a variety of different images. For example, it could be uh, the image of a political leader pursuing a passion and a personal cause. It could be an explorer cutting a path through the jungle for the rest of his group to follow. Or it could be an executive developing her or his company's strategy to beat the competition. Leaders help themselves and others to do the right thing. They set the direction. They build an inspiring vision and they create something new. Leadership is about mapping out where we need to go to, um, to win as a team or as an organization. Um, and it is dynamic, exciting and really inspiring. Yet, while leaders do set the direction, they must also use their management skills to guide their people uh, to the right destination in a very smooth and efficient way. One leadership style that serves conflict resolution is transformational leadership. So what is it? Transformational le leaders have integrity and high emotional intelligence. They motivate people with a shared vision for the future and they communicate very well. They are also typically very self-aware, authentic, empathetic, and humble. Transformational leaders inspire their team members uh, because they expect the best from everyone and they hold themselves accountable for their own actions as well. They set very clear goals and they have good conflict resolution skills. This can lead to high productivity and engagement. So according to the idea of transformational leadership, an effective leader is a person who does the following, creates an inspiring vision for the future, motivates and inspires people to engage with that vision, manages delivery of the vision, and they coach and build a team so that they are more effective in achieving the vision. Leadership brings together skills um, to do these things. Another form of leadership is servant leadership. Now, a servant leader 
is someone regardless of the level who leads simply by meeting the needs of the team or the organization. These people often lead by example. They have high integrity. They lead with generosity. The approach can create a positive corporate culture and it, it can lead to high morale among the team members. The supporters of servant leadership model suggest that it's a good way to move ahead in the world where values are increasingly important and where servant leaders can achieve power because their values and their ideals as well as their ethics are aligned. So the style does take a bit of time to apply correctly, um, but it is, um, however, leadership is not a one size fits all thing. Often you must adapt your approach to fit the situation. That is why it's uh, so useful to develop, to develop a thorough understanding of leadership frameworks and styles. And after all, the more approaches you are familiar with, the more flexible you can, you can be. And remember, change keeps us very curious. Yes. Well, thank you very much uh, for that valuable input. And as uh, those watching us can see that we have with us in this uh, group, a very diverse, uh, you know, not only diplomats, but also uh, trainers and educationists, people who've got experience in training at the highest level in leadership and skills management and dispute resolution. So uh, whoever is involved in either diplomacy or any leadership role uh, can benefit from this very important course, which is delivered by ambassadors uh, and through a very informed, uh, I, I think Charles Crawford wants to say something and if, if, I'll be welcoming his comments, of course, always. Charles, please go ahead. I just add that, you know, I think what's really difficult and I found it difficult in my own career, when you're working your way up through the system or you're perhaps, you know, in an NGO or you're perhaps even a senior person in a company is knowing what leaders actually do. You know, what goes on in their office? How do they think? How do they deal with other leaders? How do you help them? How do you get in the way? And I think the advantage which we senior professionals bring to it is that we have sat in on those meetings. You know, yes. we've watched them at very close quarters and we can see how what they do and what they think and how they decide and how, how they tick, whatever sort of leader they are, how that then feeds down into the machine and how it then feeds into decisions and how it feeds into you know, perhaps creating disputes or perhaps solving disputes. So I think it's, it's, not just the, it's not just the analysis of the issues that's important here. It's bringing the practical experience of how it works at every level so that you as someone on this course can understand what's going on and where you can best make a difference. David, if you as Stuart. Yes, please, um, Sir Stuart. Uh, I think that there's one central message to all of this, as Jerome has said, it's all about developing relationships and getting yourself in a position where you can develop the sort of relationships you need to solve disputes and bring good outcomes. And I, we all very much hope that we can impart that knowledge to all the course participants. Absolutely. And I totally agree with uh, Sir Stewart and, of course, uh, Ambassador Charles Crawford that uh, you know, there is, of course, a theory of what we what leadership is all about. And, you know, you get it in books, you can read about it, you can develop your, you know, academic skills. But then actually doing it is a, a whole new ball game. And what what brings uh, what is important in this course is that those who are delivering the course have got real time experience, as well as the academic background. So this combination of academic strength and practical experience is what makes this course unique. And of course, the important uh, alliance between uh, the UNITAR and Ambassador Partnership brings it that professional approach in the structure which is needed. And of course, this course also entitles you with a certificate at the end of your training, which is something that anybody can be proud of once they've taken the course and you know, achieved that certificate. So um, that brings us to the end of this discussion, and I'm sure we'll be having more of such discussions in the future. Let me thank all the participants who have taken their time to join us. Um, Ambassador Partnership and UNITAR look forward to delivering many courses in the future. And of course, if you want to uh, learn more about it, you can always visit our website and get more details or contact us through any of the social media networks. Thank you very much, everybody, for joining us today. Thank you for those who have viewed us and look forward to seeing you again very soon. This is me, Javed Malik from the Ambassador Partnership, saying goodbye for now.